Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to OCD Geeks. And I'm Jack. Hi, guys. Welcome. So, if you are already a listener, thank you so much for your support. We really value. And if you are new to our channel, a huge welcome. We are the OCD Geeks podcast and YouTube channel. So, Jack, would you like to introduce our show to our new listeners? Of course, Chris. Well, to put it short, I could say that we are now entering the middle of our third season of uh, OCD Geeks. And we also, you know guys, with Chris, we've been sharing uh, our passions throughout all these seasons. And our passions are wide, from books, TV series, language learning. Basically, the main reason which let us start this new adventure together was, first of all, mental health. So, from the upcoming episode, expect from us even some tips or some bits of, you know, daily routine connected to our uh, own mental health, which is very important and uh, which we actually value a lot. Yes, it's been uh, roughly a bit more than one year since we start this adventure and it seems that time flies. First of all, we decided to pick up this name, OCD Geeks, because it seems to us um, a really good fit to combine the mental health part of it with the, of course, OCD while geeks refers to all our passions that, like Jack said, are wide. We talk about so many different topics related to geek pop culture, but also not only that, I'm referring, for example, to language learning, since both me and Jack really like to learn new languages. In fact, we are Italian, but we decided to have this podcast in English to reach a wider audience compared to Italian speakers only. You know guys, maybe if you followed us during our first season of OCD Geeks, you know, we even published some short episodes about common sentences in Italian language and in everyday life, so maybe you could spot uh, this reference too. Yes, I think so. You know, I'm happy with the progress we made throughout this year, but I'm even more excited about what to expect for the upcoming year. You know guys that when we started, you know, especially me, I I always been a huge fan of podcasting as a way to communicate and to chat about specific topics. So when we started, of course, we didn't have a clear idea about all the tools and the best way about how to do that. So, you know, at first we kind of created the first season throughout the scripts. We used to meet almost every day in order to write the script together and then recording it. So something very engaging but also difficult at the same time. But you know, throughout the weeks we we got more confidence in podcasting, so we kind of decided to move away from the scripts, and that's how we started season two. Yeah, actually, the first times that we changed our style, words and expressions just didn't come out, but of course, by time and experience, we developed a a more open way of communication and that helped us even in public expression or in daily routine connected to our jobs of our communication with other people in general to be more confident in front of a camera. Yes, you know, after that we kind of focus for several weeks about TV series and movies. So most likely if you are already a listener, you know that well we cover so many different topics from Marvel movies to Pixar's Luca. Recently, the latest episodes are dedicated to Paramount Plus Halo series. We also focus directly on uh, varied Italian productions or products through which we find a way to give our own perspective as Italians. For example, I'm referring to one of the episodes that we recorded about 
the quite famous, at least here in Italy, series by Zero Calcare, Tear Along the Dotted Lines. Yes, I remember that one well, and I do hope Yeah, it was quite sequel. popular, even yes. a little, as we can say. Especially for me, I have a big passion for gaming, and some of the episodes were dedicated to this passion of mine. After a while, I figured out that it would have been better to create a different show only dedicated to the gaming world. So that's how we started Aki Geeks. That is our second channel. Like OCD Geeks, Aki Geeks as well is available on major podcast platforms as well as a YouTube channel for the video edition. We started just a few weeks ago, so you can expect more contents in the near future. From me, guys, as I'm more passionate about cinematography and visual art in general, we'll uh... Uh, hear less speaking about uh, video games because it's not my word and Chris is uh, far more confident with it but I must admit that in the last few months my culture overall in, in the gaming world has improved a lot about this new special focus. Yes, you know of course I like series and movies but I have a small knowledge of those compared to Jack so even for myself I've learned quite a lot. We can say that we are quite complementary to each other. Yes, and of course our listeners are a big part on that as well, so if you have any comment or idea or insight, you are more than welcome to let us know. Both me and Jack are always active on Instagram and also Twitter. You can find us at Chris underscore OCD Geeks as well as Jack underscore OCD Geeks. We also have our uh, special website www.ocdgeeks.com Geeks.me. Yeah, and we promise that we are going to update very soon. Catching up with all our last episodes. Yes. So, from now on, we would like to still talking about series and movies, language learning, but, you know, it will be more just a chat between two friends about combining many topics with the mental health part as well as daily life because you know you can think of us as your friends so you know we want you to give a little bit of insight just to have a good time together yes we are here to help you relax your mind and let you wander through your curiosity and imagination at the same time yes so really the focus of OCD CD Geeks is, of course, in relation to mental health because we believe that focusing on our passion is a great way to dismantle our negative thoughts. So if you have a passion, it could be anything really from music, sport, to language learning. You know, if you cultivate it, um, I'm sure that if you are struggling with anxiety or OCD more uh, specifically, I think it's one of the best ways to see concrete improvements in basically in the quality of your life. Yes, our first aim is creating a, a contact with you guys and trying a way to reach you and to get to know more about you. So if you have some tips about a special series or products you want us to give it a try, just write in the section comment down below or, you know, at one of our contacts. Yes, let's not forget that you can always write uh, a traditional email at chris.ocdgeeks at gmail.com as well as jack.ocdgeeks at gmail.com Yeah, about uh, this week, is there something uh, in TV or some products that you, you want to talk about in particular? Yes, actually, Jack, these days I've been watching quite a lot uh, shows and uh, anime that comes from Japan because uh, I have a big passion for uh, Japanese uh, since I was a young kid, but I haven't got the chance to go there yet. But despite that, I've been studying both at university as well as self-study Japanese. I think that watching something in uh, Japanese that is quite entertaining for me can be a really good way to improve my listening skills as well as vocabulary in general. So this 
week uh, I've been watching a new series on uh, Netflix that is called Old Enough. The original title is Hashimete no Otsukai. That basically, if you That want sounds clear to... now, Chris. Yes, yes. So basically, if you are curious, uh, Hashimete means the first time. No is off, Otsukai is commission. So the title gives you a hint about what's the show all about. I'm, um, approaching the end of the season, while I think that uh, you Jack saw episode one. Yes, I just saw the first episode, but I know the concept and, and the format of this, this series. I've been documenting myself uh, a bit and I find it very interesting because, yes, let me say at first that the title in original <laughs> is far more Uh, engaging and you know curious it's better than the translation in English because you know it's all about the commissions that uh, these children are sent to do what's what's the center of the TV series yeah so I heard that this show is really famous in Japan but it The first time I think that was translated and uh, added to the Netflix catalog. So if you are like us and you are not living in uh, Japan, you can easily watch it on uh, Netflix. So to be more specific, the protagonists of this show are kids from the age of uh, two to the age of five, six, and they are going out to accomplish their first commission. Of course, they are really protected by all the cast and the troop, but it's really fun because they have a little microphone together with them, so we can see how each of every children is able to uh, tackle this task and also every children has a special way to accomplish it. Yes, actually it, it seemed like a ritual of passage between the, you know, the, the, the childhood to the kind of Uh, a more adult age we cannot say adolescence we cannot say adulthood because they still remain children but uh, it's an important stage for their growth and the improvement yeah uh, because uh, you, you know jack most of them uh, are not elementary school uh, students so doing something alone or sometimes with a peer so with a friend it's really i think a meaningful experience for them it's a really an educational series there is a high purpose at the base of the series and that's that's very fair that's very that's cool apart from that you know there is also a message about uh, that is about uh, stepping out of, of your comfort zone and we should uh, all remember ourselves too because you know as when we were children all, all of us would remember about something similar happening to ourselves when our parents for example sent us to our grandmother to help her with something or you know going out just to buy from the grocery stores or at the supermarket You know, there is still something connected to being able to sort out things by yourself. Yeah, and if you link that to the OCD teams, it's kind of doing ERP. So like doing a challenge to push yourself to face your own uh, struggles. Yes, I think to some extent, to some degree, we are still all children in some aspect of our life. So we'll always have to remind ourselves uh, that there is always a way to step out of uh, our comfort zone and in to our our fears our uh, unknown yeah you know this reflection is really profound from this show you can expect uh, a relaxing and fun time the episodes are really short from 10 to 15 minutes maximum so you have a really good time just enjoying something so cheerful you know jack the world is quite a complicated place to be So I believe that watching something so peaceful is really good for our own mental health. Just watching a show with a smile. Yes, Chris, I agree. And I also wanted to say that I like this show because it gives you an outlook on, on the real Japan. I've read something, Chris, this is a selection of episodes drawn from the original series. I don't know because I've never seen the show in Japan, but you see the ear at the beginning 
beginning of every episode. Some episodes are 2008, while other 2019. So I guess it's kind of best off. Yes, and even the first episode is staged in a, not in one of the biggest cities of Japan. I mean, it seems like a little city. I don't know about the other episodes, but uh, about the episodes I seen so far, there was only one in Tokyo, while most of them were located in rural and traditional Japan. That it's a reality that I really would like to visit because they seem so peaceful. Basically, they are kind in between a modern style as well as traditional Japan. I think that's pretty cool because you know how in uh, rural areas and uh, in traditional places you can rediscover part of the cultural roots, you can have that sense of family and, and cultural closeness that you would expect to find uh, in, in a small group. So, I mean, for when you see that when, when a child goes out to pursue the task, also other people are gonna help the children. So it's something uh, unlikely in a metropolis, in a huge city, but in a small village, it's something that, you know, when you go out and you know everyone you meet uh, in the street. So it's something that gives you even more confidence, especially if you are a child that you can you you can watch around you and find familiar uh, faces and that's that's pretty important yes and i'm sure from the perspective of these uh, kids it's like traveling the world like going on a commission for the very first time alone Yes, e even if, if they cover only 20-25 meters. Sometimes uh, it's even uh, a couple of kilometers, so, you know, for a kid it's quite... Uh, yes. It's quite a deal. That's right. So, beside that, Jack, I started to watch a really famous anime series that is called My Hero Academia. And um, I know that uh, you are not familiar with this uh, series, yet, but I would recommend it. What's that about, Chris? I don't know it. So, you know guys that we've covered many, many times in the past uh, episodes dedicated to superheroes, like most of them like Marvel, but also I remember the one dedicated to superhero therapy, you know, the little mental health book that we reviewed a while ago. So, this series, My Hero Academia, in Japanese, Boku no Hero Academia, basically talks about the main character, Midoriya, who is a middle school student that in about a couple of months is going to start high school. In this kind of world, almost everyone, I would say around 80% of the population, has a, have a superpower. So Midoriya is one of the few that doesn't have any superpower at all, and he suffers quite a bit about this, but at the same time, he never gave up his dream to become a superhero himself. So this basically is what's going on in the very first minutes of the first episode. So without going into any spoiler, with unexpected adventure and series of events, he will be able to join the most famous high school in Japan dedicated to basically superheroes. That seems like an interesting plot. Yes, and I know that for sure already five series are available. There is also a movie as well as games and manga, since of course it was at the beginning a manga, but later it became an anime as well. So if you are interested in anime or I would say the superhero genre like us, I would totally recommend it because this is kind of a Japanese takes on the superhero world. That's right, Chris. Actually, I also had many animes or manga that I, I really liked. I even have here in my library one of my famous manga, which is a monster by Naoki Urasawa. It's uh, much more darker in tones, but yes, in one day I, I even explain better. But I see your point. Yeah, you know, Jack, that nowadays there is a new entire wave of anime and manga. This one specifically belongs to the shonen manga style, and the shonen basically means boy in Japanese. So are manga that are mostly targeted to boys' audience, while for example others are more 
Keen to girls, but anyone really can enjoy this one. It is not the only one. For example, I can think of Kimetsu no Yaiba, Demon Slayer. That you Demon know, Slayer, I, yes, yeah, for me it's a bit too dark. I enjoy more this light hearted atmosphere of My Hero Academia because there is a compelling story while it doesn't lack sense of humor. It reminded me, for example, to the very first season series of Dragon Ball that was kind of a mix of exciting plot and sense of humor as well. It's impossible to forget that one, Chris. Yeah, if you think about Demon Slayer, it's really dark, so I'm sure that it's a great product, but uh, don't expect to be for everyone. Yes, much more gothic in style, with western influence. Yeah, you know, there is some kind of connection with traditional Japanese fairy tales of monsters and spirits. It's really interesting as well, but let's say that it's meant also for a different type of viewer. Yes, that's right. Besides that, I'm happy to recommend both the series to our listeners, so Old Enough and My Hero then if you do like Japan. That's cool guys and I don't know if you've been acquainted with the series that Chris explained but if you did well write us a comment and give us feedback because we are very interested to know what you think about and what's your take on on these stories and these products. We will discuss about it together next time if you want. Yes. away from manga and anime is there something jack you know recently or this week that you would like to share with our listeners so for example here in italy nice spring weather fully started you know it is quite common to have around 20 degrees celsius every day and it seems that summer is quickly approaching so is there something that you would like to share with us jack well like chris apart from my daily routine you know a work and some study i just try to go outside when I could when there was light and actually we're quite lucky now because we have sunlight until 8 p.m. approximately so the day is quite long so I can even go for an evening stroll from 7 to 8 p.m. just to rest my mind just to enjoy the sunset which I really love thinking about how to set the day after and the schedule for the upcoming week so taking your time to program your priorities do you feel like going out for a walk or maybe a run help you to have a clear idea about what to do next so do you feel of course for your body physical exercise is great but also about mental health do you feel any benefits about your outdoor activities sure of course even when i'm not putting the headphones on and just relaxing myself or focusing on my activity listening to music i usually get lost in my thoughts while i run while i walk and it seems like it managed it like i managed to gain some more clarity by staying alone with myself spending time you know in nature and just not surrounded by any chaos or traffic lights or voices all around you know it's always good to have your own part of uh, isolation especially for OCD and anxiety in general like staying in the same place all day is not really the best idea for mental health so even if you go outside for a short walk even I think uh, 10 minutes is still uh, way better compared to maybe working at the laptop the whole day yeah that's right and uh, by moving yourself it seems like you you are able to move your thoughts so you don't get stuck in the same I situation. think so it's like your thoughts that are more negative kind of moved away by I would say creative and positive thoughts that are most likely generated by basically the connection with the physical activity yes you leave space in your mind for something else you just keep them going and uh, this is very important because you can see all the process as a fluid
Yeah, you know, guys, me and Jack, we are not specialists, but what we are saying is basically based upon our own experiences. So you can you can think that we have quite a knowledge about this kind of struggles. So I think it's something that can be beneficial also, let's say, to not only us. Sure, of course, this is what's all about, sharing and hearing about your experiences and find solutions together. Yeah, beside that, creating a community, new connection, you know, to chat about light topics like TV series or manga, like we said today, but also to more profound one, like, for example, mental health and how to live a more balanced lifestyle or how to be more productive. So that's That's really our goal. Again, you can think of us as your friends, even though we might not live close to you thanks to the internet, social media, YouTube, podcasting. It feels like, you know, distance count little in this matter. Yes. So guys, that's it for today. Let us know if you have any feedback, ideas or topics that you would like us to discuss. If you are a gamer like me, I would strongly recommend to check out Aki Geeks that is only dedicated to the gaming world. While if you are like us and you have a variety of interests that you would like to hear about, OCD Geeks is the place for you. That's right. So we can say that even for today, we can close our episode with the sentence that then talk our freaks. We stay tuned on OCD Geeks.